Ah. Ah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, yes. <laughs> Storm is over. Better, okay. not over. Oh, better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Matthias is also with me. I think we right away start with the case. <coughs> Yes. Okay, yes. Calcified occlusion, right uh, popliteal artery. Next slide shows you the clinical data. PAOD, rather for three, claudication, 50 meters, uh, right side. ABI is 0.5. Already intervention of the left uh, common iliac artery. And uh, next slide. This shows you from the right side, angiogram, proximal SFA is patent, but the nose, then very distal at the P1 segment, we have an occlusion. A lot of calcium here, and below the knee, we have uh, two vessel runoff to the foot. Next slide. We are in left side puncture, crossover. Uh, we're going to pass the lesion. We can show you. We still work a little bit on it. And then we want to implant the stand on indication. Yeah, fine. Thank you very much. Let's switch to the angio screen. Uh, we have waited a little bit for you, um, but then uh, finally uh, started. Well, of course, going crossover for this lesion is maybe not the directest way. However, he has some SFA disease additionally, um, also some uh, stenosis of the common femoral artery. Not, I mean, dramatic, but 50% and very calcified, so maybe not very nice to puncture in. So therefore, we choose crossover, which uh, turned out to be not so easy. As you see here, this is a 7 French 55 centimeter sheath and uh, could bring it over the bifurcation, but not further down than this here. It was just stuck. And therefore, we, we uh, use the trick, which is um, actually quite nice if you have some calcium in the SFA. So we took a balloon down. This is a 6 by 40. And we will hear some kind of stenosis, which we want to treat anyway. And here we anchored that balloon here. So we inflated this here. And now we had an anchor. And uh, now we could um, um, pull, the pull the sheath here with this anchor very easily here uh, over the bifurcation into the SFA. Yeah, so this is how the case started here. And here you can see the lesion now. It actually doesn't look very dramatic here. It's uh, maybe a P1, distal SFA, P1 going into P2 segment lesion. In fact, there's some retrograde filling here, high offspring of the anterior tibial. But it looks a little bit quite calcified, I must say. We were wondering here whether there may be also some thrombus in. As you can see, that proximal this uh, looks a little bit like trom thrombus on top. Uh, outflow is okay over the anterior. Uh, posterior is missing, and also plantar branches are not really there. Yeah, so, um, well, in this case, we really, f so we started here to take wire in, and uh, very soon saw that that actually is not so easy. So the hope was there that there's some thrombus, there's a remaining channel, but no, we had to go um, past here, that plug here. Um, so we couldn't go really through that plug, but we had to go here around that plug. But our command 18 didn't work. We started to use a stiff terumo straight to hammer here on that lesion that actually uh, yeah, went, went somewhere. Looks okay, but then outside. And uh, also to the other side, I think um, that went completely wrong. Uh. <coughs> yeah, so then, then we started here to use a CTO wire. Uh, so this is the command 250T. This is now our preferred wire yeah. for this um, cases. And uh, with uh, some drilling, um, it went here into the channel. So I don't know, if, if you see this, um, I don't think there is a chance to really go through that plug directly through in the center. I think uh, the wires will always go somehow around that plug. And I wonder if, if um, well, atherectomy here is a good solution with this, I mean, I would say poor out, outflow, a very short segment to maybe uh, place a filter with this high offspring of the anterior tibial artery. I personally think this is um, this is a clear superior case. 
but uh, it, uh, in these kind of cases where wire really goes very difficultly through that lesion, he, I felt a lot of resistance. What we start then is to rub uh, that, that channel here with the wire. Um, if we think we cannot follow with the, with the support catheter. So really wrap a channel, then pull the wire out and follow with an 014 <coughs> wire. So um, we prepared here for that, rubbing that channel. Very helpful. But uh, first change to an 018 compatible support catheter and that eventually uh, we were luck lucky also here. Also boring waiting here for the life, that's why <laughs> you <were right. laughs> uh, Went through here. Yeah, that's where we are just now. Yeah, and uh, then we've started to balloon here with a three millimeter Pacific uh, low profile balloon uh, because uh, we think, uh, well, bigger balloon may not go through. And here you can see how the balloon goes, uh, or opens, opens up here that plug. And seeing this, this is only three. I mean, we have to use a six millimeter yeah. balloon here now. And I think uh, this will not come along without rupture. Maybe um, not. No. I don't, well, so I would say. Low chance. So I have a question. So I was thinking, what is the role of uh, ultrasound-guided yeah. transcutaneous piercing of the calcium to kind of loosen it? Because I see that they do that sometimes below the knee when the balloon does not inflate. Yeah. Well, we do this below the knee. This is really a very fantastic um, um, technique uh, for distal posterior tibial or also for, sh for short segment uh, uh, stenotic lesions. Well, this is also short segment. I don't find it that successful in SFA uh, plug. However, yeah, it, it, is, it is helpful. Maybe Stephen, I think Stephen has quite some experience with this. Um, <laughs> would do this. Um, yeah, Andre, I mean, um, for the SFA, we found it useful um, post-stent implantation where um, you've implanted a stent and mm -hmm. you don't like the full expansion of the stent. Um, I've tried it with a superior and I tried it with a regular <coughs> self-expanding stent. I, it, it does help maybe to expand it up a little bit, but of course the best way to get the stent to expand is to really destroy the vessel prior to stent implantation. Yeah. So okay. this is now five. That, if that free wall yeah, is the one that's going to be at risk for rupture, then and this may be one of those cha uh, cases where just uh, a couple passes with directional Six towards that calcium lung? may give you a little bit of the, the lumen that you need. Would, would, would shock wave be something okay, that yeah. uh, you would consider in a case like that if you think that it's, um, it's limited space for you to expand into something towards mm -hmm. that? You know, I guess shockwave would be useful. I, I, I'm impressed with their ability to break calcium. The, the question is, is when this is a bullet, and it's pretty hard, I'm not sure that ablating it superficially will effectively change its compliance. Hence the reason I think where directional may be useful. And can you use something like shockwave after you implant the superior? I've never done it, but that's kind of an intriguing thing. The, the problem with superior is, is once it's compressed, Kind of stuck on either side, 16. it's anchored, so you got to really have it so okay. on either side more? to One more. Yep. So About the idea six, makes sense, but I think in yeah. practice it may not. So Andre, it looks like that balloon's uh, expanding reasonably well at that site. Yeah, it actually yeah. also did not make this typical uh, step and jump when an artery breaks. <laughs> so maybe in fact, yeah, maybe not so bad. <laughs> I pull it back a little bit. Give a little shot and see. It's a five millimeter balloon for a 5.5 outer diameter supera. We definitely have to take a six millimeter balloon in. But yeah, okay, maybe we come along without perforation. Schön warm, nicht? Schön warm. It's amazing, Andre. The patient feels, looks like he feels nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That he felt something, but um, yeah. He didn't want to complain, I think. <laughs> no, not too much uh, um, uh, I think pain, indeed. Must be a good dose of verbal anesthesia. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he likes the contrast injection, so warm, he said. <laughs> Okay, so this is now a 620 
for more focal uh, destruction and ballooning of the plug. Hmm? Andre, in a case like that, do you think um, maybe a, a directional scoring balloon where you could just score on the side of the calcium might help, Lawrence? Uh, yeah, as long as it cracks, I, you know, the scoring balloons with the calcium, is, it's really dependent on how good they are at being able to score the calcium. Mm -hmm. In many cases, if it's mm -hmm. superficial, like this is relatively and superficial, I, I think okay. it would work. The deeper wall calcium, I don't think it works very well. Okay. How about something that cuts on one side only? Obviously, you don't want to cut on a subintimal side. Mm. As long as you can tell where that size is, then it's not good enough. Mm. Um, seven? A little resistance. Yeah, seven? Seven? Yeah. Um, yeah, balloon doesn't fully open. Uh, Pacific uh, 620 at 18 atmospheres. Probably now, uh, you see this dog bone even in a short balloon. Um, probably not good enough to, to take a 6.5 super now in. Okay. Um, okay. So 6.5, not, no. No. Okay. So we ordered the 720 conquest. Here, yeah, okay, huh? Easy. No, yeah, I'm at 18 bar. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. let me first do it here, yeah. Ich kann nochmal drücken, nicht erschrecken, nicht? I think we are relatively close to perforation here. Ja. Did he feel that worse, uh, Andre? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he said he's feeling it. Mm, drückt nochmal ein bisschen, nicht? Ja. Mm, okay, <laughs> yeah. Okay, now that's was painful. Shall I check? Yeah, please. First check <laughs> before we start to take the super in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. Conquest? Conquest. Actually, we missed one area. I think yeah. here we have to balloon once yeah. again. If you go with it. Okay, I think proximal here in this area we are happy, but this still we should um, crack it a little more. more. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, <coughs> I think it's so important to take your time for contrast? preparation. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. I've come across this when I've been doing cases, so I'm just going to ask this question to the panel. Say, you balloon it, you do this, it doesn't open up. What do you guys think about putting a short wire bond and going in really high inflation so you have a controlled rupture? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, one of the, one of the only problems with, um, in this particular case is you have a collateral that's uh, right where the entrance of that calcium is. So um, I think that, that would really, um, I think that's a really large collateral. So I, I would be pretty hesitant to put a wire bond in wire that bond. location. Uh, if, um, if you're if it's further away ah, from the largest collateral, why not? Then it's in draft. Hmm? The other thing is that uh, that strategy, you have to make sure that the lesion is dilatable. So if you put a Viabon in a non-dilatable lesion, you're in trouble. So we, we sometimes do that, but everything is ready. We actually rupture first and then put Viabon in. Yeah, I mean, I would I would comment. I think I would agree. I'm 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 not a big Viabon fan in that setting. Um, I think that. You, you hate to lose any of the collateral flow. The other aspect, I think, is one of the things that we can't overlook is cost, because they are very expensive in comparison. And I think then the other aspect is you truly the um, predilatation is critically important, the, the pr preparation. Because I think if you put the Viabond in and don't have it, if you've not actually gotten that calcification um, fully expanded, you, mm -hmm. you're you know, you can go back with a very high power, with a high pressure balloon, and if you don't achieve it, then you've, then you've uh, put yourself at risk uh, of uh, premature thrombosis, I think. Do you think the risk of rupture is higher with a semi-compliant balloon at higher pressure as compared to a non-compliant? That's a good question. I don't know the answer. I'm just dilating these lesions with a non-compliant balloon because with a semi-compliant, the balloon's going to bulge out 
away okay. from the area that is giving you the problems the most, and that, that dilates and that maybe destroys and, and punctures so the, the classic of differential expansion that you're right. describing yeah. is the number one cause of rupture, at least in the early days of microplastic in the corner. So I think that would be uh, important. If you really want to do this, you know, uh, you have a couple options. You can do the Kevlar coated balloons, right? So, like Dorados, so very non compliant. Or even though it's a compliant balloon, the constrained chocolate, which is the only time, it's the first real step forward with balloon angioplasty, which is by volume and size. It keeps those pillows with the differential expansion at a minimum, which is somewhat, I think, in my opinion, useful. Looks like you got good expansion there, uh, Andre. Yes, uh, 720 Congress at 35 atmospheres opened up that plug. <laughs> So if we had, we would take a 6.0 outer diameter sopera. We don't have this. Uh, we will not try to take a 6.5 in, but 5.5 uh, uh, is now our choice. Okay. Uh, Andre, can you repeat that again? Uh, you said that you went with a 7 balloon, but you think that the OD of 6.5 is too much for the supera? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, wait, what, uh, so um, six five is enough, right? It's too much. It's too much. Yeah, I think. Uh, so that, I mean, this is our experience. If if you have really calcified lesions, although uh, your balloon is fully open, you always have some kind of recoil, unless you do this crack and pave technique, or cracking technique. Uh, this is not fully cracked here. You see this plug going back a little bit. Not popping open. Um, I think uh, you should in uh, really calcium predilate with a balloon which is one millimeter bigger than outer diameter or yeah or approximately one millimeter. So no uh, we wouldn't take a six point five outer in here now. I see. Yeah. And, and in the in are. your experience um, you know in the trial this the five five or what ended up being the five oh was the most commonly used. Okay. Is your experience on restenosis with your Supera registry uh, yeah, just as good a performer as the 6.5? Yeah, unfortunately, we don't know exactly. We haven't um, uh, really collected um, all our Supera cases in this regard. As you know, we have moved from one hospital to other. We're not allowed to analyze uh, our cases, which uh, we have treated in that hospital. So we are still um, missing this analysis. I can only say in this crack and pave registry, which we have done, um, we have done, uh, we have implanted uh, more than half of the superiors bigger than 5.5. <coughs> so most of uh, most of them were 6.5. Some were even 7.5, and the patency in these long, really long and difficult lesions was 80% at two years. So maybe bigger is is better here. So you see, it's a 5.5, and uh, what do you think? Is it very yeah, easy so or now, easy? It's not, 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 not very easy. Distal I had to compress. Now it's relative soft, I would say. But yeah, there's also no calcium here. Now, now it comes to clock. But this actually opened up quite nicely. Yeah. So, you know, in, in the deployment for the superior, if you can compress, see those. But now. If you can see those ribs, then that's a good deployment. Uh, the cell design is nice. They're not getting straight lined. It's not elongated. And then if it turns into dots, like at the bottom of the screen, that's the compressed uh, zone. That's a pretty good deployment. Yeah. So this is uh, Matthias' technique. So yeah. he, he takes some struts out of the delivery system, but then pushes the whole deli delivery system to, to pack the struts. Yes, this and as you can see, I mean, six millimeter fully open, but not so easy. Yeah, a little bit work here, but yeah. now it's getting Soft again. And that okay. balloon was semi-compliant. Uh, it was 6.0 at nominal. And here we didn't predilate that uh, much. Uh, so, Andre, okay. comment on some of these Very patients much. in which you've placed these superior stents and then have had follow-up, uh, you know, six months, a year, two years later. What, what do the stents look like? Do they, do they even out? Is there, do they retain the packed uh, appearance? Uh, not all of them. I mean, so if, if you have some, some areas of elongation or packing, 
Um, in lesions which are not too calcified, then yes. But if you have severely calcified ones, even those shorter areas actually do not nicely even out all the time. Some, I mean, if you're really not able to, to open up the stent in a <coughs> half a centimeter long calcific lesion, they will not become better over time. Nice. That looks very nice. Cool. Oh. Quite happy, yes. Fine. Okay, very good. Another angulation maybe to see how round this is, but oops. <laughs> Just a moment. It's extreme angulation. Just a moment. <laughs> Very nice. Looks lovely. Okay. Here. And yeah, I mean, there's there's no con no contrast between stent and and arterial wall. So no. even though we had a seven millimeter balloon and this 5.5 superior, no gap there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, happy with this case. Very nice. Right. We should give uh, Andrea a round of applause.